Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this quick video, I'll give you a couple tips on how to build an efficient and converting headers and footers for your blog on WordPress using Elementor. So the first thing that you need to know about the header, it has to be the most informative and the most convenient for user to use. So it has to, so it has to include all the necessary elements that might be useful for user and the ones that you want the user to see all the necessary information that you want the user to consume. The same applies to the footer. The difference between the header and the footer is that users do not always scroll all the way down to the footer. So you put some additional information in there and usually you put some repeated elements. So we have all the same elements that you do in the header. You also have them in the footer, but in the footer you can provide the more rich information, more links, more, maybe some even posts, maybe a gallery, maybe popular tags. So they help the navigation, maybe the copyright information, etc. Any of that doesn't have to be in the header. The header has to be minimalistic and be useful as well for you as for the user. I want to show you how you can create custom headers and footers using Elementor. All you need is JetBlocks plugin for Elementor that allows you to create custom headers and footers and work with them as with any regular section or page using Elementor. It goes with a bunch of useful widgets that you can add to your page, such as logo, menu, search, authorization links, shopping cart, hamburger menu, etc. So you see all of them here, eight exquisite widgets, and you can be sure that they are highly efficient and they allow you to create converting and very efficient headers. Let me show you how. Before we jump right into creating a header, I advise you to check out the 24 historical WordPress theme that I'm using today for this tutorial. This one is a top-notch theme for a news portal and a blog. So if you want to be on top in the industry, if you want to have all the latest technology to showcase your posts on WordPress, this is the theme that you should get. So we're right back in. I can see that I can now edit a header and a footer. I'll start with the header. And now it will take me to the Elementor editor where I can start editing this header. So the first you see a logo. Your header should definitely have a logo. This is the most important part because this is all about the identity of your brand, of your website and the visibility and the recognition. So this is the widget which is called site logo, which goes inside JetBlocks plugin. By the way, you get JetBlocks for free if you get 24 historical and not only JetBlocks, but JetElements, JetBlog and a ton of other plugins that allow you to boost workflow and create more complex, more sophisticated and more modern, more interesting for the users websites and more converting, of course. So what's next is the menu. So here, go ahead and change the menu that you want to display. You can also create mega menus. You can create hamburger menus. To create a mega menu, you will need jet menu plugin. So usually you will need a search. So this also goes with jet blocks. So your user can navigate across the website, especially if you have a blog. So you start to simply type in the name of the post and this is going to pop up and the user is going to click on it and get right to the post that the user is interested in. So here you can simply place a banner, but this is very optional and usually not recommended, but unless it is something very important that you want every, every single user to see. Also, of course, the authorization links such as login, register, get to your card, you know, whatever allows your user to interact with the personal cabinet or the personal shopping cart that they have on your website. The social links are also must have, and it is better to put them somewhere where the user will definitely see them. It is better to omit some other elements, but let the social links be in there because it helps the user find you across the social media, across the internet, and it helps you to build a stronger following. Another pretty optional widget that I have here in this header is the news ticker, which is quite specific for the news portal, I would say, but you can also use it for your blog. It really does depend on what news you're posting and what type of posts you are releasing. But what it does is helps your users to keep up to date with the content that you release. 
because it will be showing all the latest posts that you have on your website. And it allows the users to quickly jump right to the particular post or the particular news that the user saw in uh, this news ticker. All right, this was it for the header. Okay, now let's briefly have a look at the footer and what we can do with the footers with jet blocks in 24 historical. So here it goes, here's the footer. In this particular footer, there's also a menu. So here it goes. This is pretty optional and just helps the navigation and helps the convenience. So the user that has scrolled down all the way down to the footer doesn't have to go back to top to the header to access the menu. And the user can use the same menu or a little bit different menu that you have here in your footer. It is not recommended to put mega menus or drop down menus into your footer. As you see here, I used the menu that doesn't have any drop down menus or mega menus. Because it is the footer and unless it is unfolds up, the user will not be able to see it. And even if it unfolds up, it's going to cover all the other elements here in footer, which is not really efficient. Also, you see a logo here, which is also a must have element. It has to be here as a part of your brand, as a part of your identity. Maybe some text in here, but it's also very optional. What has to be here as well, 100% must have, is the social links again. So if the user has scrolled down and maybe the user didn't notice these social links in the header, and if it's possible and if the space in the footer allows you, it is better to make them a little bit more noticeable, so make them bigger some quick links which is also optional popular tags which allows the user to navigate across the website a really efficient technique for a blog but if you don't have a lot of space and if you don't want to make a footer really really big well you can omit this one and the recent post which is i say must have for a blog maybe these are the latest posts that you have on your website maybe these are the most important ones maybe these belong to the most interesting to the trending category that you have on your post. Maybe these are the hottest news. So definitely put some recent posts in the footer as well. What is great about footers is that you're not limited when it comes to the space that the footer can take. So you see that the footers are a lot bigger and a lot taller than the headers because they are all the way down there. They are at the bottom of the page and it doesn't really matter how big they are because really it takes up the half of the page that the user sees once they enter your website but with the footer it doesn't matter but really don't make it ridiculously big like don't let it take up all the height of the page the half of the height is probably the maximum that can be and thanks to the JetBlocks plugin you can work with this footer just the same way as you can with any other section in Elementor and you've seen all the widgets you can use and I definitely recommend you to go and check out JetBlocks plugin and 24 historical WordPress theme on templatemonster.com. So I hope this quick tutorial was helpful and thank you so much for watching.